Beep, beep, everybody. Hope you're all having a great day today. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Uh, so we're at Duncansville Antique Depot in Duncansville, Pennsylvania, just outside of Altoona. And this is actually stock footage I took of the front of this place back in March. But when we go inside, we'll be looking at the place in early July. It's one of those things when you go on one of these trips, you forget to take footage of the outside sometimes. And to make up for that, uh, thankfully, I saved earlier footage. So when you go in, you want to go to the right past the cash register and there are these three long rows and the one that's furthest to your right has uh, quite a few display cases that feature all kinds of sports cards. Uh, now, as you can see, there are some, I believe, complete sets of basketball and football, um, plus assorted other kinds of different things there. There are some smaller sets like the rookie traded score set there there's some starting lineup stuff and of course we have um, various sports cards uh, we have some vintage baseball in there plus some basketball and i apologize for the glare that shows up on the top loaders uh, the lighting inside a lot of these places is fluorescent light bulbs and sometimes it's hard to get a good Good view of it. There's a Robin Yount rookie card there. And as you can see, there's a wide variety of uh, different sports presented here, mostly basketball and baseball, but there's some wrestling. Uh, there's a 1964 Philadelphia football set, which I'm not familiar with. Uh, they're asking $950 for that. And there's some older ones in binders, 75 tops football set. Uh, some of those old postcards. There's a U Lou Piniella rookie from 1964. There's some comic books. And we're going to scoot right on to the next case. We got this old Dodgers poster. Uh, some more sealed boxes, some more sets in binders. There's a 93 top set with the Jeter rookie for 35. And uh, there's some rack packs. Some Elvis Presley cards. <laughs> a few football cards in there. Uh, Tigers, Tiger Woods cards. Not sure what's in that one. There's a few more football cards. There's some Batman cards and uh, some kind of plate there. There's cards from the, that science fiction series, the 4400, if you can remember that from the early 2000s. Uh, some non-sports stuff here. Superman the movie, Rocky IV, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Now here, um, I'm goofing off. I don't know what I'm doing, and I think I pressed the play button on the video without noticing it so basically you're getting a shot of my pale skin and my hand all blurred out and here we are we're back on track and just in the front of that case there's a bunch of vintage uh, baseball cards here there's a few of these that i uh, actually wanted to get but i ran out of time and forgot about it. There's an Opeachy Barry Bonds from 87. Not sure if $10 is a good price for that or not. Never really looked that one up. As you can see, there's multiple sports in this one. There's a George Brett rookie card for $35. A 1971 Willie Mays for $50. And, uh, some autograph photos and things and uh, some a Kellogg set back there. Here's a complete 1975 Topps Mini for 875. It was originally 1100. Uh, just around the other side of that case, there's a bulletin board where they have all these two dollar priced cards hanging there. As you can see, there are multiple sports here too: golf and racing and football, basketball. And baseball, and here's a series of Roberto Clemente cards from a bunch of um, bunch of more unusual sets you don't normally uh, find cards for on a regular basis. 
Again, some basketball. Again, I apologize for the glare of the fluorescent lighting off of this. Uh, perhaps I should have slowed down my viewing of it. There's an 84 Fleer Nolan Ryan. Um, some more basketball, football. Lots and lots of things to look at here. And there's some older stuff. There's a 73 Jim Palmer, an 82 Fleer Ricky Henderson, an 81 Willie Stargell Coca-Cola card. A couple more Stargells along that line there. And I think, I, I think I'm panning a little too fast here, so I apologize for that. Uh, when will I ever learn? I don't know. Some Bo Jackson cards down there. Both football and baseball. And over here there's some, well, vinyl records, but I didn't really look at them very closely. And some Pittsburgh-related stuff in this uh, case in the back of this one booth. Plus some Sports Illustrated magazines. Big variety of things here. And we scoot around, and this case has some sealed small box sets. There's some FLIR update sets there. Uh, various other kind of sporting effects and some Elvis stuff. A so, couple more smaller sets. Glasses, caps, beer cans, and storage boxes. Quite a few of them, and there's some factory uh, sealed wax boxes, I believe, and a Wheaties box. Now across the aisle from that booth, there's another booth that has all these uh, junk wax um, sets and binders. And they're using old um, IBM three ring binders. You can see a 92 leaf, 91 score. And it looks like they're about $13 each. There's a field stream guide to fish, freshwater fishing three ring binder that was probably originally used for magazines, but in this case was used for um, baseball cards. So this was almost entirely junk wax here. And nothing really caught my eye there because I pretty much have all of this myself. But if you're looking for it, there you go. Some more smaller uh, sets, it's most of them about two bucks each. There's a few various odds and ends there. There's some wax boxes and a bunch of uh, racing cards. And here's like a bunch of uh, factory sealed um, junk wax complete sets. Uh, I pretty much uh, got all my junk wax from this dealer uh, about a year ago and he seems to have an ample supply of it they typically are going between 15 and 25 dollars maybe i'd say and on this table the, he has some uh, junk wax boxes and i think these uh, typically go for around the 15 to 20 dollar price range i didn't really look very closely at them so take that with a grain of salt but I have bought some in the past from here that were about that price. Uh, not far from this booth, we have one of these rotating display cases that has a bunch of singles in them. And this was a new feature I had not seen uh, since my last visit here. And you have some more modern cards up in the top shelves. Uh, they tend to be Pittsburgh related, as you can see there. A bunch of Henry Davis cards. And there's some Roberto Clemente ones, but they t they seem to be more modern issues of him. And there's uh, some football cards there on that next one. And down below we'll see some vintage stuff like a 75 Garvey. Uh, 1972 Frank Robinson there. There's a 76 Thurman Munson, uh, three of them in a row. That's a 73 Lou Brock, and Frank Robinson, another Frank Robinson, 
and a Brooks Robinson from 1970. And if you go over, go around the store all the way to that last row, uh, this is where my favorite bin is to get uh, 10 cent, 25 cent, and 50 cent cards. Up on this shelf, he has like a big selection of uh, inserts for cheap prices, but they were mostly multiple sports in those boxes. Uh, several sealed boxes of the smaller sets. You have the tops traded sets there. Um, he has these large boxes of common cards. You see basketball for five bucks, baseball for five bucks, that whole box if you're interested in common cards. There's some 2017 Donruss, a whole box for four bucks. There's a couple of them there. And here are the 10 cent bins and the 25 cent bins. And over on the other side, we have some wax boxes and some hand collated complete sets. There's some rack packs there. Uh, some uh, boxes that just feature Phillies cards from the 80s. few more hand collated sets and some more giant boxes of baseball card commons uh, I couldn't tell you what was in there <laughs> they look pretty heavy you have to check it out sometime now back up towards the front of the store we have all a couple rows of cases and that's where this footage was taken from uh, there's an interesting box of threes company stickers <laughs> Uh, you see multiple sports in this one, uh, racing, football, basketball, uh, and definitely baseball. And there's a Matting, couple Mattingly rookies there. There's a Wade Boggs rookie. Uh, there's some non-sports stuff like MASH and E.T., yeah, plus some other like jerseys and things, and, and there's some newer uh blaster boxes uh mostly basketball it looks like and another case down in this aisle featuring some singles here a wide variety of sports uh tends to lean in the pittsburgh region this is in the western part of pennsylvania so you'll see a lot more pittsburgh stuff in these cases uh, i don't get the very many antique malls on the eastern side of pennsylvania but i I'm going to guess that maybe they lean a little more towards Philadelphia. And one of these days I'll get out that way and, and check out some places. There's some old gloves down there in the bottom too. Uh, here's some football cards in another case. Glasses, mugs, baseballs, uh, assorted cards and boxes. Uh, I've never been able to get into this one. I've never had the time to explore to see... Uh, what kinds of things might be in those boxes, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, this one tends to be mostly modern cards. And one of these days I'd like to get in there and, and have a look at that, and maybe maybe I might find something cool in there. Uh, there's some more cards down there below. Patches and photos and logos and stuff. This one has a bunch of autographs. There's a Joe DiMaggio autograph there. And a, a Mickey Mantle one, that's $125 for that. And there's like the monkeys down there on that one shelf. It's a curious mixture of things. A Nolan Ryan plate, commemorative plate of some sort. So lots of neat stuff to look at at this place. Here's another one that has some uh, modern uh, blaster and hanger boxes. Uh, these are mostly all basketball up here. Uh, they have some boxes that are assorted by individual players and teams. And uh, some more varieties of sports, including soccer there and uh Mike Trout cards in that one box. There's a box that just says two dollars and up. Autographed cards, a dollar, dollar fifty. Uh, one of these days, I'd like to get into this one too and have a look at all that stuff uh, in, that are in the boxes. There's some cards from the '60s and '70s and '80s in that one. 
that would be an interesting one to check out. Here's a bunch of unopened packs. And this uh, one big case has all these uh, vintage cards in it. And I think I purchased one from here during this trip. Um, condition for this, this case, I think, tends to be from good to excellent. Occasionally, there's an excellent mint one, maybe even a near mint one. I'd say prices are close to retail, but sometimes a few of them are a good deal. Um, now, my wife... Uh, uh, sent me a text and asked me if I was done. So this was the last case I got to film. There were two more that I missed. Um, so I apologize for that. But after this, we'll go over what I found here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tour of Duncansville Antique Depot, which is obviously in Duncansville, Pennsylvania. Um, let's go over the stuff that I got there. We'll start with, um, I guess, boxes first, and then we'll go over the singles. I got this uh, 1988 Fleer Baseball All-Stars, um, still sealed, um, pack of 44 cards for $3. Um I've had a few, bought a few of these from this uh, antique mall in the, well, in the past two years or so. Haven't bought any in a while, and this one I've uh, never seen before. Thought I had a pretty good deal for three bucks. Uh, I may open this up in another video down the road. I'm not sure. If you're interested, uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll consider recording a, uh, uh, an opening of this uh, earlier than some other things. Um, Find a place to put that. Uh, 1988 Fleer update. Um, this was just five bucks. Uh, I already had one of these in the past, um, but when I opened it up, I found that I had corner dings on just about every card, so that made it basically not worth uh, much of anything. So I saw this there, and it's like, well, I need to have a, a new set of these because I'd rather have some undinged cards from this set in my to put in my collection in so i found this for five bucks and i thought that was seemed like a fair price for that so i picked that up um not sure we might open that up in another video um push nathan over the side there have a 92 Fleer Ultra complete hand collated set for $8. I have a handful of these in my collection um, from various different things like, uh, I guess, uh, multiple um, like uh, binders that I've purchased uh, off and on and occasional mystery boxes. Some of these have shown up in, but uh, I didn't have the full set. I didn't feel like opening up with packs because I wasn't going to take the risk that they were going to be all bricked up. And uh, I had a, a little inspection of this inside and everything seems to be in working order and the condition of them looks great. So I thought eight bucks was a pretty good price for that. I doubt I could find a price similar to that for it online anywhere. So I grabbed it. Um, this is a curious one. It's an opened box with the top lid cut off. And I guess that's so you could look at it. This is 2017 Donruss. This entire box for $4. Um, and before you think that this was just the commons in the set, it's actually a considerable amount more. So we'll just quickly go through just a handful and give you an idea. There's an Ozzy Smith on the old 83 design. Josh Donaldson, Jose Abreu, Miguel Cabrera, um, there's a black and white, uh, uh, short print name variation as well for Daniel Murphy, Eric Hosmer, Kirby Puckett, Salvador Perez, and you have some common cards in here too. There's some duplication. There's a black and white, um, variation for Chris Bryant. Uh, that one I hadn't seen. 
<laughs> I went through them briefly uh, just before I started filming this, and I pulled out a few highlights that I'll show right after I go through this small amount of them as a sampling. There's Robin Yount on the old 83 design, Nomar Mazzara, Trevor Bauer, Kyle Seeger, Salvador Perez again. So there is some duplication, but not too bad. Nelson Cruz, Michael Franco... Jacob deGrom, Jose Altuve, Goose Gossage, uh, Johnny Cueto, Max Scherzer, Matt Carpenter, Carlos Martinez. Um, so this was kind of a, a cheap way to get the bulk of the set. Um, what you won't find is like an Aaron Judge card and some of the higher priced ones. I'll have to seek those out on my own as singles down the road if I want to get them but um these were some of the highlights that i pulled out of here there's i guess you could call this a name variation it just says roy for rookie of the year and this is for Corey seager and in this box i also have the one that is the regular base set uh card uh here's a name variation for miguel cabrera uh name variation for anthony rizzo a uh, name variation for Johnny Bench. I had no idea anybody nicknamed him the Little General, but I guess they did. I don't remember that. I only saw Johnny Bench play in the early 80s at the tail end of his career. Um, I'm guessing Sparky Anderson may have given him that name. I don't know. Yeah, it says 1968 NL Rookie of the Year up there. Uh, here's a name variation for Nolan Ryan, The Express. A name variation for Ryan Sandberg, Rhino. Uh, here's uh, the Frank Thomas base card, and here's the uh, black and white variation of that card. Uh, these both have the same exact number on them. In fact, I'd, it looks like the black and white one even has a, a different shade of gray on the back. Uh, this is a Josh Donaldson uh, name variation, Bringer of Rain. A Duke Snyder name variation, the Duke of Flatbush. A uh, Yon Moncada rated rookie, and uh, we already saw that card, and a Yon Moncada in the, the rookies insert set. There are a few other the rookies inserts in this set, but this was probably the, the main one that I found there. Like I said, it didn't have like Aaron Judge or any of the other uh, higher priced uh, cards in the set. So I think, you know, four bucks, not a bad way to almost complete a set. So I was happy about that. Uh, let's go over the singles that I bought. Uh, I was in that that uh, bin area that had 10 cent, 25 cent, and 50 cent cards. And I picked up quite a few from there. Uh, Clayton Kershaw here. This is from Topps Gallery. That was only 10 cents. Uh, Jackie Robinson from Topps Gold Label. This is from 2018. This is Class 1. Class 2. And class three on all three of those were a quarter each. Pretty good deal for that, I thought. Ted Williams, this is class one, class two, and class three. Again, 25 cents for each one. Now, I only found class one for Hank Aaron. I picked that one up. They, there were no class two or class three cards available in the bins. So I, I, I thought that was a pretty cool looking card. So I grabbed that. We have a 1984 Topps design for Ted Williams from, I think that's 2019. Uh, I think this is from 2019 Topps Update. This was an insert card. thought that was pretty cool. 25 cents was a good deal for that. Here's another Jackie Robinson card, another 25 cent card. Uh, this is from an insert set called Vintage Legends Collection. And I think that was from 2010 Topps. And um, I'm a big fan of the 81 design. It was like the major big set of my youth. Um, I've mentioned it before on this channel that my brother and I tried to complete that set by buying packs at a local Wawa. Every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, we were there buying like five or six packs each. And I fell short of completing the set by three cards, which I later acquired uh quite a few years later and finished up the set. Uh, this is an Upper Deck MVP card from the Batter Up insert set of Joe DiMaggio. This was only a dime. And I think this is the most expensive card in that, or one of the most expensive ones in that Batter Up series. I think it goes for quite a bit more than a dime. So I was like, wow, got to get that. 
Got an Alex Bregman uh, rated rookie card from uh, 2017 Donruss. Did not have that rookie card in my collection. And also picked up his Topps Chrome rookie card. And the Rookies uh, insert set from 2017 Donruss. And that, they, these were all 50 cents each. Was that uh, the first one? 50 cents also? Yeah, they were all 50 cents. Uh, Nolan Arenado um, insert from something called Topps 2030. Uh, this is the first time I've ever seen these myself. This came from the 2020 Tops. I'm not sure uh, if this was in Series 1 or Series 2. But Nolan Arenado definitely looks like he's going to be a potential Hall of Famer down the road. So when you see cards of his, uh, even if they're you know not early in his career and they're only for $0.25, cents, I grab them if I don't have them. And that one I did not have. This uh, The same thing with Paul Goldschmidt. He looks like a potential Hall of Famer down the road. And I know both Nolan and Paul are not having the best years of their career this season, but it's still early in the season, we'll, so we'll see how they finish their season. But still, they're not putting up bad numbers. It's just not what we're used to seeing from both of them. And this one is come from Topps Finest. It's called Franchise Finest is the insert set for that. One of the insert sets for that, um, that set. And this was from 2016. And uh, the only vintage card I picked up was this 1966 Juan Marichal. Got this for $30. The corners mostly look sharp, but uh, one thing that uh, I can warn you about things in top loaders and antique malls is sometimes the lighting isn't the best, and sometimes there are things you miss, and you think the card looks great, and then you get home, and then you realize there's something wrong with it you didn't catch when you were there, and that was the case for this one. And let me pull this out. It's unfortunate it doesn't have a penny sleeve in there either. There's, uh, of course, the corners aren't perfect, but still, it's centered real well. And the corners aren't that bad for a card of this age. But if you tip it up a little bit like this, you can see a little bit of remnants of what might have been a wax stain that might have been somebody might have tried to remove. You can see some of it there, and it's a little bit on his face. So unfortunately, it's a, a kind of a minor wax stain. The back of the card looks pretty clean. Uh, so I can't complain about that. But it basically means I probably paid full retail for this. Uh, in You know, book value for this, I think, on the high end is probably about 50. On the low end is about 20. So I got it right in the middle. It's just, I think, if for this wax stain... If I knew this wax stain was on there, I probably wouldn't have bought it. I probably would have, I probably would have bit more at like the fifteen to twenty dollar range instead of thirty for this. But still, lesson learned, lesson that I keep trying to learn. And you see, when you have it in the top loader, you can't really tell. You know, you can't really tell it. It hides it very good. It's one thing, one thing that bothers me about top loaders. For one thing, it's great that, that the card is in a top loader because then the person at the register can handle it without doing any damage. Uh, you can't mistakenly do any damage if you accidentally drop it after you pick it up. Um, but it hides little imperfections like that. Uh, usually you can see the corners okay. Usually you can see the surface, but sometimes I miss things on the surface. The wax stain on the back is a lot easier to see because it's usually darkened. But on the front, it's usually just some kind of substance that's stuck to it. And it doesn't necessarily darken the card like it does on the back. So that was what I got at Duncansville Antique Depot. Um, there were a few more cards I wish I had picked up, but we were in a rush to get out of there. Uh, I got a text from my wife saying... Are you done yet? <laughs> and I, I was looking at this card at the time, and there was another uh, booth that I wanted to pick up a Greg Nettles rookie card that they had for nine bucks, and two 1961 cards of Frank Howard and Ted Klazuski that were five each, and I, they looked good, but I didn't get a chance to ask to open that, that, um, that display in that booth and uh so i didn't get to inspect them close enough uh, uh the tops of the cards were all i could see and they looked like they had pretty sharp corners pretty clean borders and so i thought the prices seemed fair i just needed to see them to see if the bottoms were okay on them and if they were i was probably going to get them 
Uh, so that's for another trip, unless somebody else uh, buys them before I get to it. Uh, I don't know the next time I'll be there, hopefully soon. Um, and I guess that's uh, all to report on this trip. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Appreciate your support. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Beep, beep.